Sign languages, also known as signed languages, are languages that use the visual manual modality to convey meaning. Language is expressed via the manual sign stream in combination with non-manual elements. Sign languages are full-fledged natural languages with their own grammar and lexicon. This means that sign languages are not universal and they are not mutually intelligible, although there are also striking similarities among sign languages. Linguists consider both spoken and signed communication to be types of natural language, meaning that both emerged through an abstract, protracted aging process and evolved over time without meticulous planning. Sign language should not be confused with body language, a type of nonverbal communication. Wherever communities of deaf people exist, sign languages have developed, and are at the cores of local deaf cultures. Although signing is used primarily by the deaf and hard of hearing, it is also used by hearing individuals, such as those unable to physically speak, those who have trouble with spoken language due to a disability or condition, augmentative and alternative communication, or those with deaf family members, such as children of deaf adults, CODAs. It is unclear how many sign languages currently exist worldwide. Each country generally has its own, native sign language, and some have more than one. The 2013 edition of Ethnologue lists 137 sign languages. Some sign languages have obtained some form of legal recognition, while others have no status at all. Linguists distinguish natural sign languages from other systems that are precursors to them or derived from them, such as invented manual codes for spoken languages, home sign, baby sign, and signs learned by non-human primates. History Groups of deaf people have used sign languages throughout history. One of the earliest written records of a sign language is from the 5th century BC, in Plato's Cratylus, where Socrates says, if we hadn. ta voice or a tongue, and wanted to express things to one another, wouldn't we try to make signs by moving our hands, head, and the rest of our body, just as dumb people do at present? Until the 19th century, most of what is known about historical sign languages is limited to the manual alphabets fingerspelling systems that were invented to facilitate transfer of words from a spoken language to a sign language, rather than documentation of the language itself. Pedro Ponce de Leon is said to have developed the first manual alphabet. In 1620, Juan Pablo Bonet published Reducción de las Letras y Arte para enseñar a hablar a los mudos, Reduction of Letters and Art for Teaching Mute People to Speak, in Madrid. It is considered the first modern treatise of sign language phonetics, setting out a method of oral education for deaf people and a manual alphabet. In Britain, manual alphabets were also in use for a number of purposes, such as secret communication, public speaking, or communication by deaf people. In 1648, John Bulwer described, Master Babington, a deaf man proficient in the use of a manual alphabet, contrived on the joints of his fingers, whose wife could converse with him easily, even in the dark through the use of tactile signing. In 1680, George Dalgarno published Didiscalocophis, or, The Deaf and Dumb Mons Tutor, in which he presented his own method of deaf education, including an arthrological alphabet, where letters are indicated by pointing to different joints of the fingers and palm of the left hand. Arthrological systems had been in use by hearing people for some time. Some have speculated that they can be traced to early OAM manual alphabets. The vowels of this alphabet have survived in the contemporary alphabets used in British Sign Language, Auslan and New Zealand Sign Language. The earliest known printed pictures of consonants of the modern two-handed alphabet appeared in 1698 with Digiti Lingua, Latin for language, or tongue, of the finger, a pamphlet by an anonymous author who was himself unable to speak. He suggested that the manual alphabet could also be used by mutes, for silence and secrecy, or purely for entertainment. Nine of its letters can be traced to earlier alphabets, and 17 letters of the modern two-handed alphabet can be found among the two sets of 26 handshapes depicted. Charles de la Fan published a book in 1692 describing an alphabetic system where pointing to a body part represented the first letter of the part e.g. brow equals b, and vowels were located on the fingertips as with the other British systems. He described such codes for both English and Latin. 
By 1720, the British manual alphabet had found more or less its present form. Descendants of this alphabet have been used by deaf communities, or at least in classrooms, in former British colonies India, Australia, New Zealand, Uganda and South Africa, as well as the republics and provinces of the former Yugoslavia, Grand Cayman Island in the Caribbean, Indonesia, Norway, Germany and the United States. Frenchman Charles Michel de L. Epe published his manual alphabet in the 18th century, which has survived basically unchanged in France and North America until the present time. In 1755, Abbé de L. Epe founded the first school for deaf children in Paris. Laurent Clerc was arguably its most famous graduate. Clerc went to the United States with Thomas Hopkins Gallaudet to found the American School for the Deaf in Hartford, Connecticut, in 1817. Gallaudet's son, Edward Minor Gallaudet, founded a school for the deaf in 1857 in Washington, D.C., which in 1864 became the National Deaf Mute College. Now called Gallaudet University, it is still the only liberal arts university for deaf people in the world. Sign languages generally do not have any linguistic relation to the spoken languages of the lands in which they arise. The correlation between sign and spoken languages is complex and varies depending on the country more than the spoken language. For example, the US, Canada, UK, Australia and New Zealand all have English as their dominant language, but American Sign Language ASL, used in the US and English-speaking Canada, is derived from French Sign Language whereas the other three countries sign dialects of British, Australian and New Zealand Sign Language. Similarly, the sign languages of Spain and Mexico are very different, despite Spanish being the national language in each country, and the sign language used in Bolivia is based on ASL rather than any sign language that is used in a Spanish-speaking country. Variations also arise within a national sign language which don't necessarily correspond to dialect differences in the national spoken language, rather, they can usually be correlated to the geographic location of residential schools for the deaf. International sign, formerly known as gestuno, is used mainly at international deaf events such as the Deaf Olympics and meetings of the World Federation of the Deaf. While recent studies claim that international sign is a kind of a pidgin, they conclude that it is more complex than a typical pidgin and indeed is more like a full sign language. While the more commonly used term is international sign, it is sometimes referred to as gestuno, or international sign pidgin and international gesture, i.g. International sign is a term used by the World Federation of the Deaf and other international organizations. Linguistics In linguistic terms, sign languages are as rich and complex as any spoken language, despite the common misconception that they are not real languages. Professional linguists have studied many sign languages and found that they exhibit the fundamental properties that exist in all languages. Sign languages are not mime. In other words, signs are conventional, often arbitrary and do not necessarily have a visual relationship to their referent, much as most spoken language is not onomatopoeic. While iconicity is more systematic and widespread in sign languages than in spoken ones, the difference is not categorical. The visual modality allows the human preference for close connections between form and meaning, present but suppressed in spoken languages, to be more fully expressed. This does not mean that sign languages are a visual rendition of a spoken language. They have complex grammars of their own and can be used to discuss any topic, from the simple and concrete to the lofty and abstract. Sign languages, like spoken languages, organize elementary, meaningless units called phonemes into meaningful semantic units. These were once called cherimes, from the Greek word for hand. In the case of sign languages, by analogy to the phonemes from Greek for voice of spoken languages, but now also called phonemes, since the function is the same, this is often called duality of patterning. As in spoken languages, these meaningless units are represented as combinations of features, although often also crude distinctions are made in terms of handshape, or hand form, orientation, location, or place of articulation, movement, and non-manual expression. More generally, both sign and spoken languages share the characteristics that linguists have found in all natural human languages, such as transitoriness, semanticity, arbitrariness, productivity, and cultural transmission. 
Common linguistic features of many sign languages are the occurrence of classifiers, a high degree of inflection by means of changes of movement, and a topic comment syntax. More than spoken languages, sign languages can convey meaning by simultaneous means, e.g. by the use of space, two manual articulators, and the signer's face and body. Though there is still much discussion on the topic of iconicity in sign languages, classifiers are generally considered to be highly iconic, as these complex constructions function as predicates that may express any or all of the following, motion, position, state of descriptive, or handling information. It needs to be noted that the term classifier is not used by everyone working on these constructions. Across the field of sign language linguistics the same constructions are also referred with other terms. Today, linguists study sign languages as true languages, part of the field of linguistics. However, the category, sign languages, was not added to the linguistic bibliography, Bibliographie Linguistique until the 1988 volume, when it appeared with 39 entries. Relationships with spoken languages Always there is a common misconception that sign languages are somehow dependent on spoken languages, that they are spoken language expressed in signs, or that they were invented by hearing people. Similarities in language processing in the brain between signed and spoken languages further perpetuated this misconception. Hearing teachers in deaf schools, such as Charles Michel de Lepe or Thomas Hopkins Gallaudet, are often incorrectly referred to as inventors of sign language. Instead, sign languages, like all natural languages, are developed by the people who use them, in this case, deaf people, who may have little or no knowledge of any spoken language. As a sign language develops, it sometimes borrows elements from spoken languages, just as all languages borrow from other languages that they are in contact with. Sign languages vary in how and how much they borrow from spoken languages. In many sign languages, a manual alphabet fingerspelling may be used in signed communication to borrow a word from a spoken language, by spelling out the letters. This is most commonly used for proper names of people and places. It is also used in some languages for concepts for which no sign is available at that moment, particularly if the people involved are to some extent bilingual in the spoken language. Fingerspelling can sometimes be a source of new signs, such as initialized signs, in which the handshape represents the first letter of a spoken word with the same meaning. On the whole, though, sign languages are independent of spoken languages and follow their own paths of development. For example, British Sign Language BSL, and American Sign Language ASL, are quite different and mutually unintelligible, even though the hearing people of the United Kingdom and the United States share the same spoken language. The grammars of sign languages do not usually resemble those of spoken languages used in the same geographical area. In fact, in terms of syntax, ASL shares more with spoken Japanese than it does with English. Similarly, countries which use a single spoken language throughout may have two or more sign languages, or an area that contains more than one spoken language might use only one sign language. South Africa, which has 11 official spoken languages and a similar number of other widely used spoken languages, is a good example of this. It has only one sign language with two variants due to its history of having two major educational institutions for the deaf which have served different geographic areas of the country. Spatial grammar and simultaneity Sign languages exploit the unique features of the visual medium, sight, but may also exploit tactile features, tactile sign languages. Spoken language is by and large linear, only one sound can be made or received at a time. Sign language, on the other hand, is visual and, hence, can use a simultaneous expression, although this is limited articulatorily and linguistically. Visual perception allows processing of simultaneous information. One way in which many sign languages take advantage of the spatial nature of the language is through the use of classifiers. Classifiers allow a signer to spatially show a reference type, size, shape, movement, or extent. The large focus on the possibility of simultaneity in sign languages in contrast to spoken languages is sometimes exaggerated, though. The use of two manual articulators is subject to motor constraints, resulting in a large extent of symmetry or signing with one articulator only. 
Further, sign languages, just like spoken languages, depend on linear sequencing of signs to form sentences. The greater use of simultaneity is mostly seen in the morphology, internal structure of individual signs. Non-manual elements. Sign languages convey much of their prosody through non-manual elements. Postures or movements of the body, head, eyebrows, eyes, cheeks, and mouth are used in various combinations to show several categories of information, including lexical distinction, grammatical structure, adjectival or adverbial content, and discourse functions. At the lexical level, signs can be lexically specified for non-manual elements in addition to the manual articulation. For instance, facial expressions may accompany verbs of emotion, as in the sign for angry in Czech sign language. Non-manual element may also be lexically contrastive. For example, in ASL, American Sign Language, facial components distinguish some signs from other signs. An example is the sign translated as not yet, which requires that the tongue touch the lower lip and that the head rotate from side to side, in addition to the manual part of the sign. Without these features the sign would be interpreted as late. Mouthings, which are parts of spoken words accompanying lexical signs, can also be contrastive, as in the manually identical signs for doctor and battery in sign language of the Netherlands. While the content of a signed sentence is produced manually, many grammatical functions are produced non-manually, i.e., with the face and the torso. Such functions include questions, negation, relative clauses and topicalization. ASL and BSL use similar non-manual marking for yes, no questions, for example. They are shown through raised eyebrows and a forward head tilt. Some adjectival and adverbial information is conveyed through non-manual elements, but what these elements are varies from language to language. For instance, in ASL a slightly open mouth with the tongue relaxed and visible in the corner of the mouth, means carelessly, but a similar non-manual in BSL means boring or unpleasant. Discourse functions such as turn-taking are largely regulated through head movement and eye gaze. Since the addressee in a signed conversation must be watching the signer, a signer can avoid letting the other person have a turn by not looking at them, or can indicate that the other person may have a turn by making eye contact. Iconicity the first studies on iconicity in ASL were published in the late 1970s, and early 1980s. Many early sign language linguists rejected the notion that iconicity was an important aspect of the language. Though they recognized that certain aspects of the language seemed iconic, they considered this to be merely extralinguistic, a property which did not influence the language. However, mimetic aspects of sign language, signs that imitate, mimic, or represent, are found in abundance across a wide variety of sign languages. For example, deaf children learning sign language try to express something but do not know the associated sign, they will often invent an iconic sign that displays mimetic properties. Though it never disappears from a particular sign language, iconicity is gradually weakened as forms of sign languages become more customary and are subsequently grammaticized. As a form becomes more conventional, it becomes disseminated in a methodical way phonologically to the rest of the sign language community. Frischberg 1975 wrote a very influential paper addressing the relationship between arbitrariness and iconicity in ASL. She concluded that though originally present in many signs, iconicity is degraded over time through the application of grammatical processes. In other words, over time, the natural processes of regularization in the language obscures any iconically motivated features of the sign. Some researchers have suggested that the properties of ASL give it a clear advantage in terms of learning and memory. Psychologist Roger Brown was one of the first to document this benefit. In his study, Brown found that when children were taught signs that had high levels of iconic mapping they were significantly more likely to recall the signs in a later memory task than when they were taught signs that had little or no iconic properties. A central task for the pioneers of sign language linguistics was trying to prove that ASL was a real language and not merely a collection of gestures or English on the hands. One of the prevailing beliefs at this time was that real languages must consist of an arbitrary relationship between form and meaning. Thus, if ASL consisted of signs that had iconic form-meaning relationship, it could not be considered a real language. As a result, iconicity as a whole was largely neglected in research of sign languages. 
The cognitive linguistics perspective rejects a more traditional definition of iconicity as a relationship between linguistic form and a concrete, real-world referent. Rather it is a set of selected correspondences between the form and meaning of a sign. In this view, iconicity is grounded in a language user's mental representation. Construal. In cognitive grammar. It is defined as a fully grammatical and central aspect of a sign language rather than a peripheral phenomenon. The cognitive linguistics perspective allows for some signs to be fully iconic or partially iconic given the number of correspondences between the possible parameters of form and meaning. In this way, the Israeli Sign Language ISL, sign for ask has parts of its form that are iconic. Movement away from the mouth means something coming from the mouth and parts that are arbitrary, the handshape, and the orientation. Many signs have metaphoric mappings as well as iconic or metonymic ones. For these signs there are three-way correspondences between a form, a concrete source and an abstract target meaning. The ASL sign learn has this three-way correspondence. The abstract target meaning is learning. The concrete source is putting objects into the head from books. The form is a grasping hand moving from an open palm to the forehead. The iconic correspondence is between form and concrete source. The metaphorical correspondence is between concrete source and abstract target meaning. Because the concrete source is connected to two correspondences linguistics refer to metaphorical signs as double mapped. Classification Although sign languages have emerged naturally in deaf communities alongside or among spoken languages, they are unrelated to spoken languages and have different grammatical structures at their core. Sign languages may be classified by how they arise. In non-signing communities, home sign is not a full language, but closer to a pidgin. Home sign is amorphous and generally idiosyncratic to a particular family, where a deaf child does not have contact with other deaf children and is not educated in sign. Such systems are not generally passed on from one generation to the next. Where they are passed on, creolization would be expected to occur, resulting in a full language. However, home sign may also be closer to full language in communities where the hearing population has a gestural mode of language. Examples include various Australian Aboriginal sign languages and gestural systems across West Africa, such as Mofu Gudor in Cameroon. A village sign language is a local indigenous language that typically arises over several generations in a relatively insular community with a high incidence of deafness, and is used both by the deaf and by a significant portion of the hearing community, who have deaf family and friends. The most famous of these is probably the extinct Martha's Vineyard Sign Language of the U.S., but there are also numerous village languages scattered throughout Africa, Asia, and America. Deaf community sign languages, on the other hand, arise where deaf people come together to form their own communities. These include school sign, such as Nicaraguan Sign Language, which develop in the student bodies of deaf schools which do not use sign as a language of instruction, as well as community languages such as Bamako Sign Language, which arise where generally uneducated deaf people congregate in urban centers for employment. At first, deaf community sign languages are not generally known by the hearing population, in many cases not even by close family members. However, they may grow, in some cases becoming a language of instruction and receiving official recognition, as in the case of ASL. Both contrast with speech taboo languages such as the various Aboriginal Australian sign languages, which are developed by the hearing community and only used secondarily by the deaf. It is doubtful whether most of these are languages in their own right, rather than manual codes of spoken languages, though a few such as Yolnu Sign Language are independent of any particular spoken language. Hearing people may also develop sign to communicate with speakers of other languages, as in Plains Indian Sign Language, this was a contact signing system or pidgin that was evidently not used by deaf people in the Plains nations, though it presumably influenced home sign. Language contact and creolization is common in the development of sign languages, making clear family classifications difficult. It is often unclear whether lexical similarity is due to borrowing or a common parent language, or whether there was one or several parent languages, such as several village languages merging into a deaf community language. 
Contact occurs between sign languages, between sign and spoken languages, contact sign, a kind of pidgin, and between sign languages and gestural systems used by the broader community. One author has speculated that Adamorog Sign Language, a village sign language of Ghana, may be related to the gestural trade jargon used in the markets throughout West Africa, in vocabulary and aerial features including prosody and phonetics. BSL, Auslan and NZSL are usually considered to be a language known as BANZSL. Maritime Sign Language and South African Sign Language are also related to BSL. Danish Sign Language and its descendants Norwegian Sign Language and Icelandic Sign Language are largely mutually intelligible with Swedish Sign Language. Finnish Sign Language and Portuguese Sign Language derive from Swedish SL, though with local admixture in the case of mutually unintelligible Finnish SL. Danish SL has French SL influence and Whitman 1991, places them in that family, though he proposes that Swedish, Finnish, and Portuguese SL are instead related to British Sign Language. Indian Sign Language ISL is similar to Pakistani Sign Language, ISL fingerspelling uses both hands, similarly to British Sign Language. Japanese Sign Language, Taiwanese Sign Language and Korean Sign Language are thought to be members of a Japanese Sign Language family. French Sign Language Family. There are a number of sign languages that emerged from French Sign Language LSF, or are the result of language contact between local community sign languages and LSF. These include, French Sign Language, Italian Sign Language, Quebec Sign Language, American Sign Language, Irish Sign Language, Russian Sign Language, Dutch Sign Language NGT, Spanish Sign Language, Mexican Sign Language, Brazilian Sign Language Libras, Catalan Sign Language, Ukrainian Sign Language, Austrian Sign Language along with its twin Hungarian Sign Language and its offspring Czech Sign Language, and others. A subset of this group includes languages that have been heavily influenced by American Sign Language ASL, or are regional varieties of ASL. Bolivian Sign Language is sometimes considered a dialect of ASL. Thai Sign Language is a mixed language derived from ASL and the native sign languages of Bangkok and Chiang Mai, and may be considered part of the ASL family. Others possibly influenced by ASL include Ugandan Sign Language, Kenyan Sign Language, Philippine Sign Language and Malaysian Sign Language. German Sign Language DGS, gave rise to Polish Sign Language. It also at least strongly influenced Israeli Sign Language, though it is unclear whether the latter derives from DGS or from Austrian Sign Language, which is in the French family. Lyons Sign Language may be the source of Flemish Sign Language BGT, though this is unclear. According to an SIL report, the sign languages of Russia, Moldova and Ukraine share a high degree of lexical similarity and may be dialects of one language, or distinct related languages. The same report suggested a cluster of sign languages centered around Czech Sign Language, Hungarian Sign Language and Slovak Sign Language. This group may also include Romanian, Bulgarian, and Polish sign languages. Sign languages of Jordan, Lebanon, Syria, Palestine, and Iraq, and possibly Saudi Arabia, may be part of a sprachbund, or may be one dialect of a larger Eastern Arabic sign language. Known isolates include Nicaraguan Sign Language, Turkish Sign Language, Kata Kolak, Al Said Bedouin Sign Language, and Providence Island Sign Language. The only comprehensive classification along these lines going beyond a simple listing of languages dates back to 1991. The classification is based on the 69 sign languages from the 1988 edition of Ethnologue that were known at the time of the 1989 Conference on Sign Languages in Montreal and 11 more languages the author added after the conference. In his classification, the author distinguishes between primary and auxiliary sign languages as well as between single languages and names that are thought to refer to more than one language. The prototype A class of languages includes all those sign languages that seemingly cannot be derived from any other language. Prototype R languages are languages that are remotely modeled on a prototype A language, in many cases thought to have been French Sign Language by a process Kroeber 1940 called stimulus diffusion. 
The families of BSL, DGS, JSL, LSF, and possibly LSG were the products of creolization and relaxification of prototype languages. Creolization is seen as enriching overt morphology in sign languages, as compared to reducing overt morphology in spoken languages. Typology Linguistic typology, going back to Edward Sapper, is based on word structure and distinguishes morphological classes such as agglutinating, concatenating, inflectional, polysynthetic, incorporating, and isolating ones. Sign languages vary in word order typology. For example, Austrian Sign Language, Japanese Sign Language and Indo-Pakistani Sign Language are subject-object-verb while ASL is subject-verb-object. Influence from the surrounding spoken languages is not improbable. Sign languages tend to be incorporating classifier languages, where a classifier handshape representing the object is incorporated into those transitive verbs which allow such modification. For a similar group of intransitive verbs, especially motion verbs, it is the subject which is incorporated. Only in a very few sign languages, for instance Japanese sign language, are agents ever incorporated, in this way, since subjects of intransitives are treated similarly to objects of transitives, incorporation in sign languages can be said to follow an ergative pattern. Brentari classifies sign languages as a whole group determined by the medium of communication, visual instead of auditory, as one group with the features monosyllabic and polymorphemic. That means, that one syllable, i.e. one word, one sign, can express several morphemes, e.g., subject and object of a verb determine the direction of the verb's movement, inflection. Another aspect of typology that has been studied in sign languages is their systems for cardinal numbers. Typologically significant differences have been found between sign languages. Acquisition Children who are exposed to a sign language from birth will acquire it, just as hearing children acquire their native spoken language. The critical period hypothesis suggests that language, spoken or signed, is more easily acquired as a child at a young age versus an adult because of the plasticity of the child's brain. In a study done at the University of McGill, they found that American Sign Language users who acquired the language natively from birth performed better when asked to copy videos of ASL sentences than ASL users who acquired the language later in life. They also found that there are differences in the grammatical morphology of ASL sentences between the two groups, all suggesting that there is a very important critical period in learning signed languages. The acquisition of non-manual features follows an interesting pattern. When a word that always has a particular non-manual feature associated with it, such as a WH question word, is learned, the non-manual aspects are attached to the word but don't have the flexibility associated with adult use. At a certain point, the non-manual features are dropped and the word is produced with no facial expression. After a few months, the non-manuals reappear, this time being used the way adult signers would use them. Written forms Sign languages do not have a traditional or formal written form. Many deaf people do not see a need to write their own language. Several ways to represent sign languages in written form have been developed. Stokoe Notation, devised by Dr. William Stokoe for his 1965 Dictionary of American Sign Language, is an abstract phonemic notation system. Designed specifically for representing the use of the hands, it has no way of expressing facial expression or other non-manual features of sign languages. However, his was designed for research, particularly in a dictionary, not for general use. The Hamburg Notation System Hamnosis, developed in the early 1990s, is a detailed phonetic system, not designed for any one sign language, and intended as a transcription system for researchers rather than as a practical script. David J. Peterson has attempted to create a phonetic transcription system for signing that is ASCII-friendly known as the Sign Language International Phonetic Alphabet SLIPA. Signwriting, developed by Valerie Sutton in 1974, is a system for representing sign languages phonetically, including mouthing, facial expression, and dynamics of movement. The script is sometimes used for detailed research, language documentation, as well as publishing texts and works in sign languages. C5s is another orthography which is largely phonemic. 
However, a few signs are logographs and or ideographs due to regional variation in sign languages. AS Alphabet is a system designed primarily for education of deaf children by Dr. Sam Sapala which uses a minimalist collection of symbols in the order of handshape location movement. Many signs can be written the same way, homograph, so far, there is no consensus regarding the written form of sign language. Except for signwriting, none are widely used. Maria Galia writes that signwriting is becoming widespread, uncontainable and untraceable. In the same way that works written in and about a well-developed writing system such as the Latin script, the time has arrived where SW is so widespread, that it is impossible in the same way to list all works that have been produced using this writing system and that have been written about this writing system. In 2015, the Federal University of Santa Catarina accepted a dissertation written in Brazilian Sign Language using sudden signwriting for a master's degree in linguistics. The dissertation, The Writing of Grammatical Non-Manual Expressions in Sentences in Libras Using the Signwriting System, by João Paulo Ampesson states that, The data indicate the need for non-manual expressions usage in writing sign language. Sign perception For a native signer, sign perception influences how the mind makes sense of their visual language experience. For example, a handshape may vary based on the other signs made before or after it, but these variations are arranged in perceptual categories during its development. The mind detects handshape contrasts but groups similar handshapes together in one category. Different handshapes are stored in other categories. The mind ignores some of the similarities between different perceptual categories, at the same time preserving the visual information within each perceptual category of handshape variation. In society Deaf communities and deaf culture when deaf people constitute a relatively small proportion of the general population, deaf communities often develop that are distinct from the surrounding hearing community. These deaf communities are very widespread in the world, associated especially with sign languages used in urban areas and throughout a nation, and the cultures they have developed are very rich. One example of sign language variation in the deaf community is Black ASL. This sign language was developed in the black deaf community as a variant during the American era of segregation and racism, where young black deaf students were forced to attend separate schools than their white deaf peers. Use of sign languages in hearing communities on occasion, where the prevalence of deaf people is high enough, a deaf sign language has been taken up by an entire local community, forming what is sometimes called a village sign language or shared signing community. Typically this happens in small, tightly integrated communities with a closed gene pool. Famous examples include Martha's Vineyard Sign Language, United States Al Said Bedouin Sign Language, Israel, Kata Kolak, Bali, Adamorov Sign Language, Ghana, Yucatec Maya Sign Language, Mexico. In such communities, deaf people are generally well integrated in the general community and not socially disadvantaged, so much so that it is difficult to speak of a separate deaf. Community. Many Australian Aboriginal sign languages arose in a context of extensive speech taboos, such as during mourning and initiation rites. They are or were especially highly developed among the Warlpiri, Waramungu, Dieri, Kateti, Arerente, and Warlmanpa, and are based on their respective spoken languages. A pidgin sign language arose among tribes of American Indians in the Great Plains region of North America. See Plains Indian Sign Language. It was used by hearing people to communicate among tribes with different spoken languages, as well as by deaf people. There are especially users today among the Crow, Cheyenne, and Arapaho. Unlike Australian Aboriginal Sign Languages, it shares the spatial grammar of deaf sign languages. In the 1500s, a Spanish expeditionary, Cabeza de Vaca, observed natives in the western part of modern-day Florida using sign language, and in the mid-16th century Coronado mentioned that communication with the Tonkawa using signs was possible without a translator. 
Whether or not these gesture systems reached the stage at which they could properly be called languages is still up for debate. There are estimates indicating that as many as 2% of Native Americans are seriously or completely deaf, a rate more than twice the national average. Signs may also be used by hearing people for manual communication in secret situations, such as hunting, in noisy environments, underwater, through windows or at a distance. Legal recognition Some sign languages have obtained some form of legal recognition, while others have no status at all. Sarah Batterberry has argued that sign languages should be recognized and supported not merely as an accommodation for the disabled, but as the communication medium of language communities. Telecommunications One of the first demonstrations of the ability for telecommunications to help sign language users communicate with each other occurred when AT&T's Videophone, trademarked as the Picturephone, was introduced to the public at the 1964 New York World's Fair. Two deaf users were able to freely communicate with each other between the fair and another city. However, video communication did not become widely available until sufficient bandwidth for the high volume of video data became available in the early 2000s. The internet now allows deaf people to talk via a video link, either with a special purpose videophone designed for use with sign language or with, off-the-shelf, video services designed for use with broadband and an ordinary computer webcam. The special videophones that are designed for sign language communication may provide better quality than, off-the-shelf, services and may use data compression methods specifically designed to maximize the intelligibility of sign languages. Some advanced equipment enables a person to remotely control the other person's video camera, in order to zoom in and out or to point the camera better to understand the signing. Interpretation In order to facilitate communication between deaf and hearing people, sign language interpreters are often used. Such activities involve considerable effort on the part of the interpreter, since sign languages are distinct natural languages with their own syntax, different from any spoken language. The interpretation flow is normally between a sign language and a spoken language that are customarily used in the same country, such as French Sign Language LSF, and Spoken French in France, Spanish Sign Language LSE, to Spoken Spanish in Spain, British Sign Language BSL, and Spoken English in the UK, and American Sign Language ASL, and Spoken English in the US and most of Anglophone Canada, since BSL and ASL are distinct sign languages both used in English-speaking countries, etc. Sign language interpreters who can translate between signed and spoken languages that are not normally paired such as between LSE and English, are also available, albeit less frequently. With recent developments in artificial intelligence in computer science, some recent deep learning-based machine translation algorithms have been developed which automatically translate short videos containing sign language sentences often simple sentence consists of only one clause directly to written language. Remote interpreting Interpreters may be physically present with both parties to the conversation but, since the technological advancements in the early 2000s, provision of interpreters in remote locations has become available. In Video Remote Interpreting VRI, the two clients, a sign language user and a hearing person who wish to communicate with each other, are in one location, and the interpreter is in another. The interpreter communicates with the sign language user via a video telecommunications link, and with the hearing person by an audio link. BRI can be used for situations in which no on-site interpreters are available. However, BRI cannot be used for situations in which all parties are speaking via telephone alone. With Video Relay Service VRS, the sign language user, the interpreter, and the hearing person are in three separate locations, thus allowing the two clients to talk to each other on the phone through the interpreter. Interpretation on television Sign language is sometimes provided for television programs. The signer usually appears in the bottom corner of the screen, with the program being broadcast full size or slightly shrunk away from that corner. Typically for press conferences such as those given by the mayor of New York City, the signer appears to stage left or right of the public official to allow both the speaker and signer to be in frame at the same time. 
Paddy Ladd initiated deaf programming on British television in the 1980s and is credited with getting sign language on television and enabling deaf children to be educated in sign. In traditional analog broadcasting, many programs are repeated, often in the early hours of the morning, with the signer present rather than have them appear at the main broadcast time. This is due to the distraction they cause to those not wishing to see the signer. On the BBC, many programs that broadcast late at night or early in the morning are signed. Some emerging television technologies allow the viewer to turn the signer on and off in a similar manner to subtitles and closed captioning. Legal requirements covering sign language on television vary from country to country. In the United Kingdom, the Broadcasting Act 1996 addressed the requirements for blind and deaf viewers, but has since been replaced by the Communications Act 2003. Language endangerment as with any spoken language, sign languages are also vulnerable to becoming endangered. For example, a sign language used by a small community may be endangered and even abandoned as users shift to a sign language used by a larger community, as has happened with Hawaii Sign Language, which is almost extinct except for a few elderly signers. Even national sign languages can be endangered, for example, New Zealand Sign Language is losing users. Methods are being developed to assess the language vitality of sign languages. Communication systems similar to sign language There are a number of communication systems that are similar in some respects to sign languages, while not having all the characteristics of a full sign language, particularly its grammatical structure. Many of these are either precursors to natural sign languages or are derived from them. Manual codes for spoken languages When deaf and hearing people interact, signing systems may be developed that use signs drawn from a natural sign language but used according to the grammar of the spoken language. In particular, when people devise one-for-one -one sign for word correspondences between spoken words or even morphemes and signs that represent them, the system that results is a manual code for a spoken language, rather than a natural sign language. Such systems may be invented in an attempt to help teach deaf children the spoken language, and generally are not used outside an educational context. Baby sign language with hearing children It has become popular for hearing parents to teach signs from ASL or some other sign language to young hearing children. Since the muscles in babies' hands grow and develop quicker than their mouths, signs can be a beneficial option for better communication. Babies can usually produce signs before they can speak. This reduces the confusion between parents when trying to figure out what their child wants. When the child begins to speak, signing is usually abandoned, so the child does not progress to acquiring the grammar of the sign language. This is in contrast to hearing children who grow up with deaf parents, who generally acquire the full sign language natively, the same as deaf children of deaf parents. Home sign Informal, rudimentary sign systems are sometimes developed within a single family. For instance, when hearing parents with no sign language skills have a deaf child, the child may develop a system of signs naturally, unless repressed by the parents. The term for these mini-languages is home sign, sometimes home sign, or kitchen sign. Home sign arises due to the absence of any other way to communicate. Within the span of a single lifetime and without the support or feedback of a community, the child naturally invents signs to help meet his or her communication needs, and may even develop a few grammatical rules for combining short sequences of signs. Still, this kind of system is inadequate for the intellectual development of a child and it comes nowhere near meeting the standards linguists use to describe a complete language. No type of home sign is recognized as a full language. Primate use There have been several notable examples of scientists teaching signs to non-human primates in order to communicate with humans, such as common chimpanzees, gorillas and orangutans. However, linguists generally point out that this does not constitute knowledge of a human language as a complete system, rather than simply signs, words. 
Notable examples of animals who have learned signs include chimpanzees, Washo, Nim Chimpsky and Lulus gorillas, Coco and Michael Gestural theory of human language origins. One theory of the evolution of human language states that it developed first as a gestural system, which later shifted to speech. An important question for this gestural theory is what caused the shift to vocalization. See also references Bibliography Aronoff, Mark, Mayer, Eirat, Sandler, Wendy, 2005. The Paradox of Sign Language Morphology. Language. 81-2, 301-44.doi.10.1353, LAN.2005.0043. PMC, 3250214. PMID 22223926. Baker, Anne, Bepi van den Begerde, Roland Pfau, and Trude Shermer eds. 2016. The Linguistics of Sign Languages, An Introduction. John Benjamin's Publishing Company. Branson, J., D. Miller, and I. G. Marsaja, 1996. Everyone Here Speaks Sign Language, 2, A Deaf Village in Bali, Indonesia, in, C. Lucas, ed., Multicultural Aspects of Sociolinguistics in Deaf Communities. Washington, Gallaudet University Press, pp. 39 plus, Brentari, D., 1998. A Prosodic Model of Sign Language Phonology. Cambridge, Massachusetts, MIT Press. Brown R., 1980. Why are signed languages easier to learn than spoken languages? In Proceedings of the First National Symposium on Sign Language Research and Teaching, ed. Stoko W.C., Editor, Washington, D.C., National Association of the Deaf, 9-24. Canlas, Lloyd 2006. Laurent Clerc, Apostle to the Deaf People of the New World, the Laurent Clerc National Deaf Education Center, Gallaudet University. Archived September 3, 2006, at the Wayback Machine. Duchar, Margaret, 1987. Sign Languages as Creoles and Chomsky's Notion of Universal Grammar. Essays in Honor of Noam Chomsky, 81-91. New York, Falmer. Amori, Karen, and Lane, Harlan L. E. Dees, 2000. The Signs of Language Revisited, an Anthology to Honor Ursula Belugi and Edward Klima. Mawa, N.J., Lawrence Erlbaum Associates. ISBN 0-8058-3246-7. Fisher, Susan D. 1974. Sign Language and Linguistic Universals, Actes du Colloque franco allemand de Grammaire Generative, 2.187-204. Tübingen, Niemeyer. Fisher, Susan D. 1978. Sign Languages and Creoles. Seipel, 1978-309-31. Frischberg, N. 1975. Arbitrariness and Iconicity, Historical Change in America. Language. 51-3, 696-719-DOI, 10.2307-412894. Frischberg, Nancy, 1987. Ghanaian Sign Language, in, Cleve, J. Van, ed., Gallaudet Encyclopedia of Deaf People and Deafness. New York, McGraw-Hill Book Company. Golden Meadow, Susan 2003, The Resilience of Language, What Gesture Creation in Deaf Children Can Tell Us About How All Children Learn Language, Psychology Press, a subsidiary of Taylor & Francis, New York, 2003 Gordon, Raymond, ed., 2008. Ethnologue, Languages of the World, 15th edition. SIL International, ISBN 978-1-55671-159-6-1558-1. Archived January 13, 2013, at the Wayback Machine. Sections for Primary Sign Languages, 1, and Alternative Ones, 2. Gross, Nora E., 1988. Everyone Here Spoke Sign Language, Hereditary Deafness on Martha's Vineyard. Cambridge, Massachusetts, Harvard University Press. ISBN 0-674-27041-X. Healy, Alice F. 1980. Can Chimpanzees Learn a Phonemic Language? In, Sebiak, Thomas A. and Jean Umaker Sebiak, eds. Speaking of Apes, a Critical Anthology of Two-Way Communication with Man. New York, Plenum, 141-43. Hughes, Gordon W. 1973. Primate Communication and the Gestural Origin of Language. Current Anthropology, 14 to 5 minus 32. DOI 10.1086/201401. Johnston, Trevor A. 1989. 
Auslan, the sign language of the Australian Deaf Community. The University of Sydney, unpublished PhD dissertation. Archived July 26, 2008, at the Wayback Machine. Kami, Nobutaka 2004. The Sign Languages of Africa, Journal of African Studies, Japan Association for African Studies, Vol. 64, March, 2004. Note, Kami lists 23 African Sign Languages in this article. KEGL, Judy, 1994. The Nicaraguan Sign Language Project, an Overview. Signpost, 7, 1, 24-31. KEGL, Judy, Sengiz A., Coppola M., 1999. Creation Through Contact, Sign Language Emergence and Sign Language Change in Nicaragua, in, M. Degriff, ed., Comparative Grammatical Change, The Intersection of Language Acquisition, Creole Genesis, and Diachronic Syntax, pp. 179-237. Cambridge, Massachusetts, MIT Press. KEGL, Judy, 2004. Language Emergence in a Language-Ready Brain, Acquisition Issues, in, Jenkins, Lyle, ed., Biolinguistics and the Evolution of Language. John Benjamins. Kendon, Adam, 1988. Sign Languages of Aboriginal Australia, Cultural, Semiotic and Communicative Perspectives. Cambridge, Cambridge University Press. Kimura, Doreen, 1993. Neuromotor Mechanisms in Human Communication. Oxford, Oxford University Press. Klima, Edward S. and Bellugi, Ursula, 1979. The Signs of Language. Cambridge, Massachusetts, Harvard University Press. ISBN 0-674-80795-2. Kolb, Brian, and Ian Q. Wishaw, 2003. Fundamentals of Human Neuropsychology, 5th edition, Worth Publishers. Krober, Alfred L., 1940. Stimulus Diffusion. American Anthropologist. 42-1-20. doi 10.1525, a.1940, 42.1.02a00020. Krasikowska, Grazina, 2006. Persa de W.S. Zistkim Komunikacja, an article about a dictionary of Hungarian sign language on the internet, in Polish. Lane, Harlan L., ed., 1984. The Deaf Experience, Classics in Language and Education. Cambridge, Massachusetts, Harvard University Press. ISBN 0-674-19460-8. Lane, Harlan L., 1984. When the Mind Hears, A History of the Deaf. New York, Random House. ISBN 0-394-50878-5. Medell, Samantha, 1998. Worldpiri Sign Language and Auslan, A Comparison. M. A. Thesis, Macquarie University, Sydney, Australia. Archived June 8, 2011, at the Wayback Machine. Madsen, Willard J. 1982, Intermediate Conversational Sign Language. Gallaudet University Press. ISBN 978-0-913580-79-0. Nakamura, Karen. 1995. About American Sign Language, Deaf Resource Library, Yale University, 3, Mayer, I, 2010. Iconicity and Metaphor, Constraints on Metaphorical Extension of Iconic Forms. Language, 86, 4, 865-96. doi, 10.1353, land.2010.0044. Newman, A. J., Bavelier, D., Karina, D., Jezzard, P., Neville, H. J., 2002. A Critical Period for Right Hemisphere Recruitment in American Sign Language Processing. Nature Neuroscience. 5 1, 76 80. doi 10.1038, NN 775. PMID 11753419. O'Reilly, S. 2005. Indigenous Sign Language and Culture, The Interpreting and Access Needs of Deaf People Who Are of Aboriginal and or Torres Strait Islander in Far North Queensland. Sponsored by ASLIA, the Australian Sign Language Interpreters Association. Patton, Carol, and Humphreys, Tom, 1988. Deaf in America, Voices from a Culture. Cambridge, Massachusetts, Harvard University Press. ISBN 0-674-19423-3. Fau, Roland, Marcus Steinbach and Benchy Wall, eds. Sign Language. An International Handbook, HSK, Handbooks of Linguistics and Communication Science. Berlin, Mouton de Gruyter. 
Poisner, Howard, Klima, Edward S., and Belugi, Ursula, 1987. What the Hands Reveal About the Brain. Cambridge, Massachusetts, MIT Press. Premack, David, and Ann J. Premack, 1983. The Mind of an Ape. New York, Norton. Premack, David, 1985. Gavagai, or the Future of the Animal Language Controversy. Cognition. 193, 207-96. 10.1016-0010-0277-8590036-8. PMID 4,017,517. Sachs, Oliver W. 1989. Seeing Voices, A Journey into the World of the Deaf. Berkeley, University of California Press. ISBN 0-520-06083-0. Sandler, Wendy. 2003. Sign Language Phonology. In William Frawley, ed., The Oxford International Encyclopedia of Linguistics, 4, Sandler, Wendy and Lillo Martin, Diane, 2001. Natural Sign Languages. In M. Aronoff and J. Rees Miller, eds., Handbook of Linguistics, pp. 533-562. Malden, M. A., Blackwell Publishers. ISBN 0-631-20497-0. Sandler, Wendy and Lillo Martin, Diane, 2006. Sign Language and Linguistic Universals. Cambridge, Cambridge University Press Styles Davis, Joan, Krichewski, Mark, and Belugi, Ursula, eds., 1988. Spatial Cognition, Brain Bases and Development. Hillsdale, N.J., L. Erlbaum Associates. ISBN 0-8058-0046-8, ISBN 0-8058-0078-6. Stoko, William C. 1960-1978. Sign Language Structure, An Outline of the Visual Communication Systems of the American Deaf. Studies in Linguistics, Occasional Papers, No. 8, Department of Anthropology and Linguistics, University at Buffalo, 2D ed., Silver Spring, M.D., Linstick Press. Stoko, William C. 1974. Classification and Description of Sign Languages. Current Trends in Linguistics 12.345 to 71. Taub, S. 2001. Language from the Body. New York, Cambridge University Press. Twilhar, Jan Nijan, and Bepi van den Begerde, 2016. Concise Lexicon for Sign Linguistics. John Benjamin's Publishing Company. Valley, Clayton, Seal Lucas, and Kristen Mulrooney, 2005, Linguistics of American Sign Language, An Introduction, 4th ed. Washington, D.C., Gallaudet University Press. Van Dusen Phillips S.B., Golden Meadow S., Miller P.J., 2001. Enacting Stories, Seeing Worlds, Similarities and Differences in the Cross-Cultural Narrative Development of Linguistically Isolated Deaf Children, Human Development, Volume 44, No. 6. Wilbur, R.B., 1987. American Sign Language, Linguistic and Applied Dimensions. San Diego, California, College Hill. Wilcox, P., 2000. Metaphor in American Sign Language. Washington, D.C., Gallaudet University Press. Wilcox, S. 2004. Conceptual Spaces and Embodied Actions, Cognitive Iconicity and Signed Languages. Cognitive Linguistics. 15-2, 119-47. Whitman, Henri, 1980. Intonation in Glottogenesis, The Melody of Language, Festschrift Dwight L. Bollinger, in, Linda R. Waugh and Cornelius H. Van Schoenebild, 315-29. Baltimore, University Park Press, 5, Whitman, Henri, 1991. Classification Linguistique des Longs Signes Non Vocalment, Revue Québécois de Linguistique Théorique et Appliquée 10 1, 215-88, available here further reading Fox, Margolet, 2007, Talking Hands, What Sign Language Reveals About, The Mind, Simon & Schuster ISBN 978-0-7432-4712-2 Quenqua, Douglas. Pushing Science's Limits in Sign Language Lexicon, The New York Times, December 4, 2012, p. d1 and published online at nytimes.com on December 3, 2012. Retrieved on December 7, 2012. Academic Journals Related to Sign Languages American Annals of the Deaf, Gallaudet University Press Journal of American Sign Language and Literature, a sliced. 
Journal of Deaf Studies and Deaf Education, Oxford University Press Sign Language Studies, Gallaudet University Press Sign Language and Linguistics, John Benjamin's Publishing Company External Links Note, the articles for specific sign languages, e.g. ASL or BSL, may contain further external links, e.g. for learning those languages. Long, Cygnus du Monde, Directory for All Online Sign Languages Dictionaries, in French, in English, List Serve for Sign Language Linguistics, the MUSSLAP Project, Multimodal Human Speech and Sign Language Processing for Human Machine Communication Mallory, Garrick, 1879-1880. Sign Language Among North American Indians Compared with That Among Other Peoples and Deaf Mutes. A first annual report of the Bureau of Ethnology to the Secretary of the Smithsonian Institution. Project Gutenberg. Pablo Bonet, J. De, 1620, Reduction de las Letras y Arte para Enseñar a Hablar los Mudos, Biblioteca Digital Hispanica, BNE. Science in Sign, Video, 3 Minutes. 48 Sex, by Davis, Leslie and Huang, John and Zakwin, G.V., interpreted by Callis, Lydia, on nytimes.com website, December 4, 2012. Retrieved December 13, 2012. The video translates a shortened version of a N.Y. Times Science article on how new signs are being developed to enhance communication in the sciences, extracted from Quenqua, Douglas. Pushing Science's Limits in Sign Language Lexicon, The New York Times, December 4, 2012, p. d1 and published online at nytimes.com on December 3, 2012. Retrieved on December 7, 2012. SignLang TV. Org, a project documenting sign language television shows for the deaf around the world. Sign Language at Curlie.